Hey everybody, welcome to beautiful Colorado and welcome to the all new Chevrolet Corvette E-Ray, the first ever all wheel drive Corvette, the first ever all electrified Corvette. And in this video, we're taking it for a drive. We're gonna find out is this E-Ray as good as every Corvette ever has been and does the electrification actually make this car better? He's not Corvette owner. This one. I co-own it, but I, it's it. <laughs> Look at this. In electricity alone, it allows you to accelerate fairly quickly. Oh, hit the gas too hard. This Corvette is not set up like any Corvette that's ever been made. In the middle of the car is a 6.2 liter LT2 naturally aspirated V8 that makes about 490 horsepower that feeds the rear wheels via an eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission. In the middle is a 1.9 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. And in the front is a 160 horsepower electric motor that feeds the front wheels. There is no mechanical connection whatsoever between the front and the back. It's only software and wires and computers. Morgan and Morgan make finding a lawyer for your injury case easy, fast, and free. If you're injured in an accident and don't know where to start, consider going easy. With Morgan and Morgan, they make it so easy. They have 100 offices nationwide and over 800 local lawyers to take care of your case. Submitting a claim for an injury doesn't have to be a stuffy process. In eight clicks or less on your phone, you can submit a claim to Morgan & Morgan. Share your case details, sign contracts, upload documents, and medical records, all from your phone. If you're in an accident, make sure you're okay. Make sure you get a police report. Make sure you contact your insurance company and make sure you get legal representation. With Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave the couch. Eight clicks or less and you're done. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash TFL or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell phone. The new C8 E-Ray Corvette starts at $113,000, but this car is equipped closer to 130 grand. And let's see if this interior lives up to 130 grand. Well, certainly this kind of two-tone color, this beige, or maybe it's more of like an orange on black looks really cool. And I love how they incorporate the stitching across the dash. This car has the leather everywhere. There's a long continuous row of climate controls down here where you've got everything from your temperature adjustment to your heated and cooled seats. Here we've got this leather wrap mode selector with this knob you twist to change the different modes. Here we've got the adjustability for park versus neutral drive. Put on the brake, that's how you change the gears. It even has a carbon fiber cup holder. Look at that. We've got this carbon steering wheel with of course that beige stitching and the, the flat bottom and top. This is a nice interior. It, it really is. It's a little busy. There's a lot of shapes and geometric squares and patterns going on here, but it's easily on the same standard. I, I'm going to say it. it's going to piss some people off, but this is a 911 like interior. It's very nice. Look at the headliner. It's beautiful. Starting the Corvette, it starts like any other Stingray. Foot on the brake, push the button, and that magnificent LT2 engine roars into life. And you're probably thinking that's not very hybrid-like. Where is the silent startup? Well, there is a super secret mode to start this car on electricity. So what you do is you don't push the start button. You get in, you put your foot on the brake, and then you twist the mode knob. And then look at this. There are a couple of different starting modes. There is a normal mode, which is what we just saw. There's a stealth mode where you can, uh, you know, drive the car on electricity for up to 45 miles an hour. And then there is a a shuttle mode which starts the car in electricity and only lets you go up to 50 mile an hour top speed. I'm going to floor it. Ready? In three, two, one, full throttle, electricity only, only the front wheels being powered. 15. Okay. It is not fast in shuttle mode, but it's not supposed to be. This is a cool mode where if you want to move it in your garage, not have to open the garage in the winter, stick it in shuttle mode and you can do that. And you can even see what percentage of battery we're at, which is 96% right now. So I'm going to turn the car off and we're going to start it up in the normal gasoline mode. Like I think most people are going to do every day and then see how this car drives. Now the Corvette E-Ray 
uses the electric motor to assist the gasoline engine. It gives this car all-wheel drive. It gives this car more performance than a standard V8 Stingray. And let's have the engineer explain a little bit how, uh, about how it works. All right, everybody, so I'm here with Mark. And Mark, what is your title? I'm the assistant chief engineer for the electrification system in the car. Very cool. So you are the gentleman in charge of making it all work. <laughs> yes. Or one of the folks in One charge. of the many people involved, yes. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about um, some of the big challenges with taking a vehicle that, you know, was conventionally front engine, you know, V8 rear wheel drive, and then all of a sudden complete shift to mid engine to complete shift to electrification. Right. So this car uh, was designed since the beginning, right? Since we started the CA generation planning for this hybrid to exist in the car. From the very beginning? From the very beginning. Wow. So the tunnel structure in the car is there for rigidity, for structural rigidity of the vehicle itself, but it also happens to house the battery. Um, and the packaging space for the drive unit in the front was all part of the original design for the car. So a little behind the scenes, it was always supposed to be there. Um, but yes, big challenges with a completely separate electric drive system. There's no connection between the drive system in the front and the ICE powertrain in the back. They're physically disconnected. The only time they are, the only way they are connected is with um, software wow. and the networking on the car. So let's talk a little bit about the, the drive unit in the front. Kind of what's the horsepower by itself and what were some of the, the cool things you learned that you were able to utilize from that electrification? Right, so this is uh, 160 horsepower, 125 foot pounds. Uh, the, the rotor on the electric motor spins 16,000 RPM. And um, one of the unique challenges for this kind of electrification system in Corvette versus maybe some other types of applications that this was that this was completely focused on performance. Mm. That's its primary job in the car. So everything about it is designed to be performance focused. Um, that drove us to lots of interesting design decisions like, um, you know, we knew we would add mass with the battery in the drive unit, but we tried to offset it as much as we could. So one of the big things is we use a magnesium housing. So the whole exterior structure is magnesium to take some weight out versus aluminum. Uh, all the fasteners are actually aluminum fasteners, all the bolts. Wow, okay. So that helps take a bunch of mass out. It also helps us with things that are problematic with magnesium, like galvanic corrosion, right? Where it doesn't like to play with other materials. So um, we went to aluminum fasteners to try to save some weight as well. So let's talk about the battery a sure. little bit. So 1.9 kilowatt hours. Yep. Are you liquid cooling the battery? Is it air cooled? We are liquid cooling the battery. Okay. Yep, so there's a water and glycol mixture that cycles through these cooling plates that are built into the battery and that glycol is actually contained in that little round bubble housing right above the engine on the driver's side. Let's see, uh, maybe I can point to it. It's this little guy right yes, here. Yes, exactly. That, this is the reservoir. This little That's tiny... the reservoir. Wow, yep. okay. And then you can see that the silver pipes that go from the tubes down into the lower part of the car yeah. go to a stack plate heat exchanger. And so the one side is glycol and water for the battery circuit. And the opposite side, believe it or not, is air conditioner. Oh, so wow. we call it the chiller. We actually use AC to help cool the battery. Is the is the engine cooling connected at all to the, the power, the electric powertrain cooling side of it? No. Is there any crossover like no. through a radiator or heat exchanger? Nope. Okay, interesting. Nope. And one of the interesting things about Stingray is that, or about E-Ray, is that it has the larger wide body structure of the Z06, mm. part of which we needed because of the LT6 engine has such high cooling requirements because it's a very high strung beast. And when we use the LT2 in the E-Ray, we're able to use some of that same cooling airflow, but not for LT6, rather for the electrification system. So let's talk about some of the changes you had to make to the LT2 and the transmission and, and you know both mechanical and, and programming to make it work with the EV side of it. Sure. So the LT2, um, you know, classic American muscle push rod, 495 horse, but for E-Ray we included start-stop. Uh, and that meant that we had to go to a, a high-speed high starter. Um, and then there's a series of electronic controls and software that go along with that. So that was a change on the engine side. Uh, for the dual clutch transmission, the Tremec DCT, we added an auxiliary pump. So an electric, electrically powered um, hydraulic pump that charges the valve body and solenoids inside the transmission so that we can actually shift the transmission uh, while the engine is off. So when we get into our uh, stealth mode operation where you can drive away in EV and then transition on the fly into hybrid function or e-all-wheel drive hybrid, 
Uh, the DCT is constantly staging the transmission in the background. So we know which gear we're supposed to be in based on pedal and vehicle speed, and the transmission is ready to rock. So that auxiliary pump does all that kind of behind the scenes even while the engine is off. Now let's talk about the regen, right? Because you have to yeah. put electricity back in the battery to, to charge it. Um, are you offering different regen modes? How did you make the regen work with these carbon ceramics? Talk me through that. We regen as often as we can, <laughs> uh, right? The, like the voting saying, vote early and often. Same kind of idea. We, we regen at every possible opportunity. So there's the obvious stuff like when you touch the brakes or um, when you lift throttle, under any of those conditions, we're starting to take as much regen as we can and uh, refill the battery since that's its only source of charging. We don't pull any electrical load from the engine to charge the battery. It's 100% done through regen. Um, the regeneration is uh, kind of interesting because under lower speed driving conditions around town, um, a good portion of the brake energy that you get when you touch the brake pedal is from regen. Um, it's not the friction brakes in the front. It's really mostly so it's a regen. blended brake system. It's absolutely blended. Yeah. So all of that stuff, brake system, ABS control, chassis dynamics, PTM modes, all of that stuff is heavily blended with what's going on on the front axle. But there's not like a one pedal mode. Like there's you not having like a mode. bolt where you can. Yeah. When you drive the car, what you'll find is that it drives much like a Stingray from that perspective. You don't get D-cell feel like one pedal driving. Um, we're very careful about where we take regen, and I like to think a little crafty about where we take regen, so that to the driver it seems very transparent. Now there's a lot of ways to integrate a hybrid system into a car, and I know a lot of like conventional hybrids that probably a lot of you have driven out there will cycle depending on driving condition and, and speed and throttle position between gasoline and electric. Yeah. So right, like a lot of hybrids will start out an EV, kick the gas engine on under harder acceleration, and that cruising speeds go back to an electric driving situation. Right. How does this work? If the gas engine is on, is it always on? Is it kicking on and off? Once the gas engine is on in an ignition cycle, it stays on until you turn the car off. Oh, interesting. Yeah, we can't re-enter EV modes for a couple of different reasons. But so for us, the the EV functionality is really to leave your neighborhood in a quiet way or to shuffle your car in your garage in wintertime when you don't want to load it with, you know, <laughs> um, vapor and, sure, and right. water for, for uh, corrosion reasons and stuff. All right, well, we got the car into stealth mode. And in stealth mode, you can drive a couple miles on electricity alone at speeds up to about 45 miles an hour. So if you want to leave your neighborhood, for example, be extra quiet, you can do so. And you get this cool stealth gauge. And of course, if you push the accelerator pedal down too far, it will kick on the gasoline engine. But at slow speeds, look at this. In electricity alone, it allows you to accelerate fairly quickly. Oh, hit the gas too hard, and it went into gasoline. And those little uh, indicators let you know your transitioning engine fires up, and has to synchronize the gasoline and the electric motor, and then off you go. And the cool thing there is it actually um, has the gear pre-selected, so there's no delay with the engine firing up. All right, so first impression of driving around in the E-Ray. At low speeds, at normal speeds, this car feels exactly like the standard C8 Corvette. There's very little to tell you that there is any electric assist whatsoever. So if I dial it into sport mode or track mode or my individual mode, you still get that magnificent roar of that 6.2 liter V8. Um, you know, I think when people think hybrid, they think of Prius. I don't think of anything sexy or inspiring, but this car with that massive V8 back there gives you a, a real character even driving around in town. And then when you want to dial it up a little bit and drive this car in a more sporty manner, this electric motor with 160 horsepower of assistance will, uh, according to Chevrolet, launch this car from zero to 60 in about two and a half seconds. So we're gonna do a quick launch here, not launch control, that's coming later in the video. But let's see, let's just go into the, the sport mode and see what, what it feels like when you plant the accelerator. So sport mode engaged, I'm just gonna floor it. Now, okay, yeah, very impressive. So you get a little bit of tunnel vision, but you get excellent traction off the line because both the front and the rear wheels are clawing for grip. And it, it's a very different sensation when you're pushing it hard than the standard car where those rear wheels are gonna try to spin out on you a little bit.
Now, design-wise, this car is wide-bodied like a Z06, but maybe not quite as aggressive. And there's a couple ways you can tell it's an E-Ray. First of all, there is a distinctive set of racing stripes you can get in electric blue, although this car doesn't have it. There is some badging on the side that spells out E-Ray, and that is it. Genuinely, it looks badass, it's really wide, it's super low, but no part of this car screams hybrid. E-Ray, though, is an electric ray, which is a cool animal and in line with the Stingray kind of marketing. Pretty neat. Now, of course, the E-Ray does add some weight over the standard Corvette, but what's cool is it does a really good job of hiding it, and the traction control ABS, and of course, the throttle mapping is such that the car is meant to feel very natural. The major difference you notice between driving this and the standard car is that you got much quicker um, changes in acceleration from movements in the pedal. So if you just jab at the pedal, you get a real good push regardless of what gear the gasoline engine is in because that electric motor is dialed in and ready to go and the engineer is telling me they basically give you peak torque right from zero RPM, unlike a lot of EVs where they have to ramp it up. And that's because these front tires are so wide and there's so much grip in this car that you're not ever really going to end up doing a front wheel drive burnout um, because the, the, the programming is such and the torque is such that it can handle it. Every E-Ray Corvette comes standard with performance Brembo carbon ceramic brakes. And keep in mind, this car is partially electric, so you also have front regenerative braking. This Corvette is the coupe. However, as Corvettes have been since the C4 generation, from 1984, every Corvette Coupe is actually a Targa. So the middle panel slides off like that. And now you've got open top, fun in the sun motoring. Or if you want to take the top off a little bit easier, you can, of course, get the hard top convertible. And just like every Corvette Coupe for generations, there is a place to put the hard top. It simply secures in the rear trunk. Keep in mind, this car has two trunks. And there's even a couple little latches to keep it nice and secure. There's a super secret button to pop the front trunk underneath the headlight push in and wait for it to click now you can lift open the front trunk and this is big enough for our camera bag it's big enough for a carry-on this car if you're pitching it to your significant other is a practical vehicle at least practically and to close the trunk it now has soft clothes for the 2024 model year check that out now let's talk about pricing. I said this car starts at 113. That's true in this top end 3LZ model. The base, the basic E-Ray starts about 102,000. That's a pretty big jump over the standard car, which is starts at just under 70k, right? We're looking at a 30 plus thousand dollar jump. Now you get the wide body kit, you get the big tires, you get carbon ceramics as standard, you get 655 horsepower, but that's a pretty big jump over a normal. Um, Stingray. Of course, pricing is going to be more in line with the Z06. But what's interesting about what they've done with the E-Ray is they, they, they drew like a little Venn diagram for us. And the standard Stingray was in the middle of performance and luxury GT. The Z06 is all the way over on performance. That's the track car. This is intended to be more luxury GT. A very, very, very quick car that's also more comfortable and efficient to cruise around in. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit more about the electric architecture in this car. It's a liquid cooled 1.9 kilowatt hour battery. 1.1 kilowatt hours of that is usable. So a very big buffer in this hybrid battery. And Chevrolet says that's because they have so many cycles in and out of this battery that they need to make sure they've got the reliability down. So that's why you got such a big buffer. This car regens when you brake. They did an excellent job blending in the braking um, with the brake pedal. And it also regens when you coast. So as we approach the stop sign, we're putting electricity back into the battery. And then you'll see that was about 60 horsepower worth of electricity back in the battery. You can kind of measure that in kilowatts too, but they chose to do it in horsepower. And then when I go to accelerate away, you can actually see it's taking power out of the battery. Full throttle. There you go, about 100 horsepower I just drew there from the front mounted electric motor. It's a well integrated system. You know, you, what are you, you're probably thinking, well, what happens if, if the battery is depleted? And from driving it around here, city, highway, the car, does a great job of keeping the battery topped up. You got a little red marker down here, and that's uh, an interesting area in this uh, this battery gauge because that's what Chevrolet keeps in reserve for traction control and stability control because they have to use it for motor for traction control and stability control. So you can't use the full battery, of course, but they at least let you use a bunch of it. My big complaint with this car is it's a little bit too subtle. 
you know, I, I, I appreciate that they want to kind of make the hybrid system seamless from an integration standpoint, and, and I, I like that, but there's very little to distinguish this car from a standard Stingray when you see it on the road. I'd love to see some crazy E-Ray graphics down the side, or give it side pipes, or make the tail of the Stingray you know, jagged like a lightning bolt. This thing needs to scream, I'm not just a normal Corvette, I'm not a Z06, I'm something special. And that's, I think, an area that Chevrolet missed. Um, and maybe they'll have a full EV down the line, which is gonna be more like that, but um, I wish they had marketed a little bit more as being something, something special. It's day two and now we are at the racetrack where Chevrolet has set up a nice little road course for journalists to try out the new E-Ray on track. And we also have a chance to do a couple of zero to 60 launches, which I'm definitely excited to show you what that's like. And Jason, you did the all wheel drive calibration on this E-Ray. That's correct. Yeah. So what does that mean in a real world, um, real world speak? So what does your day to day look like? Well, a lot of uh, different development and different con weather conditions. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking at, you know, surface meal, we're looking at uh, uh, anything that influences tire capacity, right? So basically my role is to model, all, is to make sure that the physics is calibrated such that we send a min-max limit to the propulsion system that basically says both in the regen direction, so negative torque and positive torque when you're on the throttle, here's my min-max and as you turn, that decreases. So you literally turn the wheel and, right? Yeah, interesting. That's pretty much how it works. Awesome. Yep. Well, let me know um, what we're supposed to be doing We here. can uh, pull up here. Yep, sounds good. And I've already got you um, a PTM uh, race. Yep. What's interesting is we do a lot of these media launches and they're almost never in Denver because you lose, what, 15% up here yeah. um, in an NA engine. But because we're in an electrified E-Ray, you, you kind of get some of, some of that back, which right. is pretty neat. So talk me through launch control, how does this work? So you press and hold the brake yep. until it says ready. Yep. Then you go to watt, mm -hmm. so all the way, and you just release the brake, it's that simple. Cool. So launch control ready, release the brake. Wow. Yeah, that's, um, that's pretty alarming. I mean, the, the difference between a launch control acceleration where you're able to um, hold those RPMs high and standard acceleration, I mean, that's a that's a huge difference. Yeah. It's amazing. So what's the purpose of this circle here? Is this gonna be your All right, so this is where you're still system on, so I want you to get to max lat. Yep. And just sort of feel the total grip of the car. Okay. Because when we go system off, I'm gonna ask you to push through it to learn to drift. So when we line up, I wanna show you a, a kind of a hidden feature, I guess. Yeah, what's a hidden feature? Maybe, maybe you, you, you've already seen it, maybe not. So you grab both paddles. Yep. Grab them both, yep. release just the right. Yep. Release this side, grab it. Yep. One more time. See that green gear? Yeah, what is that? Now you can hold the uh, brake pedal down just like you do for a normal launch. Okay. And then feather the throttle and launch wherever you like. You're in control now. About three. That's fine. That's fine. Yep. Wow. And the back end's gonna come around a little easier, and that's okay. Yep. There you go. You can feel it. <laughs> Look at that, yeah. It's playful. Oh, right. Drift. You can do it. Okay, I'll <laughs> give it a go. So you get up to max lat and give it a little flick and goose the gas. Now the trick is, once, if you can avoid the chunks, yep. there, the trick is, once you slide, there you go. Stay on it. Exactly, you got it. Wow, look at that. You're Unreal. A, you're a fast learner. You want to go to the right? Yeah, let's again? give it a go. Yeah. That is so progressive. And like your brain is telling you like counter more and more and, and like feather the accelerator, but yep. you're like, you just gotta trust it will pull you out of there. Yep. Unreal. Yeah. Okay, so same thing. So hit max and then yep. flick it a little bit. Make sure you get the wake chunks. Yeah. It is a parking lot. And I think we might have cornered the rears. <laughs> Dude, that is amazing. Yeah. That is so fun. It is. I'm Chris Fix. Oh, we got the face reveal from <laughs> The Straight Pipes, probably my favorite YouTube channel out there. These guys are awesome. And they've come all the way to Canada, to Colorado. And you guys are Corbett owners. Yes, that's he's, right. he's the he's Corvette, the Corvette owner. owner. This one. I co-own it, but I, it's his. <laughs> yes, it's a fast Corvette. It's fully modified. And uh, we were 
basically now Corvette people because we've learned it we bought it. So what do you think? Hybrid Corvette? Pretty cool? Pretty cool, cool idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They nailed it. It's a cool idea for a new market. Yeah. I would say. Very cool. All, All right. right. I got to go do donuts. Yeah, go do donuts. We'll see you later. Now, when I was doing my 0 to 60s, I actually couldn't hit 60 in that short little uh, little little strip there. I kept being 55. So I gave this little DL to the uh, development engineer and told him, go run it on the course. He did. And his quickest time was 3.48 seconds. And of course, we're at over a mile above sea level here. The electric motor does help a little bit, but this is no rollout. That seems about right for this elevation. So not 2.5 at sea level on a prep surface, but on a non-prep surface, no rollout at elevation, 3.48 is the quickest we could do, or he could do. So overall, folks, I think Chevrolet did a great job with this new E-Ray Corvette. Look, it's a hybrid, but that doesn't mean that it's some tree-hugging Prius thing. It's a hybrid to be faster than a standard Stingray Corvette, which is already insanely fast. And if you want to learn more, guys, be sure to stay tuned to alltfl.com, where hopefully we'll have more videos on this car coming up shortly. Is it as high performance or track focused as a Z06? No, but it's not supposed to be. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This has been Tommy, behind the camera Ian. We'll see you in the next video.